Okay, so this is part two of our series, Dispensational Ideology, a Self-Avowed Anti-Jesus Doctrine. So what we showed you last time is that Rudolf Bultmann had a battle or confrontation verbally with uh, William Reed, who said, hey, we have to stop listening to Paul. He doesn't even quote Jesus, you know, so we need to just be following Jesus. So uh, Rudolf Bultmann, Bultmann stepped in there and said, no, 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 Paul did that purposely because he knows from Jesus that Jesus' words no longer matter and we no longer have to follow his lessons. We no longer know Jesus in the flesh. We only know Jesus as reinterpreted by Paul in his revelations, which he was told by Jesus he cannot repeat them, so we have to just trust whatever Paul's telling us is what we need to follow. But this paved the way to Nazism, because now all you have is a Christianity without Christ, and that's what, in 1937, uh, Rudolf, um, Dietrich Bonhoeffer warned about, and he said, hey, look, we're heading down the path where there's no Christianity left because we don't even follow the words of Christ. And look at the different things. Rudolf Bultmann never, ever spoke out against Nazism directly, ever. And the, you're going to see where it went. And the one man who stood against him gets killed in 1943. Okay, and not one man. There were many people who were resisting. But Bultmann was silent, absolutely silent. And so Bonhoeffer in 1937 spoke out against the doctrines of uh, Rudolf Bultmann. He didn't name him directly, but that's, what he's ta that's who he's talking about. Bonhoeffer says in one passage, we have developed a Christianity without Christ. But, but Bultmann finds that, remember, he's doctrinally saying that's exactly right. That's, Paul doesn't have Jesus' lessons because that's not intended for us. That's why Paul's silent. That's how he explained away William Reed's good points. As a result of this, Christianity without Christ, Bonhoeffer said, if Jesus himself, alone with his word, could come in our midst at sermon time, a significantly large group would, quote, reject his message. That's at page 35. Now, I want to read you a longer segment from page 59. All right, I'm going to read it and make a comment. An abstract Christology, a doctrinal system, a general religious knowledge on the subject of grace or on the forgiveness of sins renders discipleship superfluous. And in fact, they positively exclude any idea of discipleship, whatever, and are essentially inimical to the whole conception of following Christ. I'm going to pause there. He is saying the doctrine of grace or faith alone is in is, men uh, makes discipleship unnecessary, superfluous, and in fact, it actually excludes the idea of obeying. Meaning, uh, discipleship is a word synonym for obeying. You're going to follow Christ. You're going to learn His lessons and, and change your life, right? So it makes, it exclude faith alone, essentially excludes any idea of discipleship, whatever. And it has a third effect. It's essentially inimical. It's the enemy of the whole conception of fallen Christ. End of first sentence. Very long sentence. Next sentence. Quote, with an abstract idea, it is possible to enter into a relation of formal knowledge, to become enthusiastic about it, and perhaps even to put it into practice, but it can never be followed in personal obedience. So now what is he saying? An abstract idea. So now faith alone becomes an abstract or assent to a truth. So you believe in a fact, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Okay. Uh, so now you have a formal knowledge of who Jesus is. He's Messiah. He's a prince and all these kind of things. But there's no, nothing else to it. He says you could even become enthusiastic in these things as people get converted and they think they're saved. Right. But uh, and perhaps they even put something into practice. So they, they get a little excited, they put some deductions of Jesus in practice, but that's but they're what's going to happen. But it never can be followed into personal obedience, because you've not been told that's what you need to do. You're just being taught faith alone, and you're saved, and you get excited and all that. You may even read some of Jesus' words, you might follow some of it, but you've never been told that you did there's anything more than faith that's necessary for salvation so you just you just abandon the whole project you know why why bother with this unnecessary step of learning how to follow him then his third sentence so that's two sentences and it's it's almost two paragraphs then finally the next quote christianity without the living christ is inevitably christianity without discipleship and Christianity without discipleship is always Christianity without Christ. It remains an abstract idea, a myth. So in 1937, the diagnosis he had is that when you have faith alone, this head knowledge in your head, 
you're not told that discipleship or obedience has any personal obedience has any factor in your salvation you you end up having a christianity that has no teaching that we need to disciple you in the, me- the lessons and teachings of jesus christ this becomes a christianity without christ and then christianity is simply an abstract idea and it becomes a myth and now you have the rest of the story now you know why the nazis were aiming for paganism because they could go, one myth is good as another you just you've just turned jesus christ into nothing more than myth by teaching faith alone and that is why paul's doctrine is inimical inimical to christ it's the enemy of christ when you preach paul you are preaching the enemy of christ and it, and just I'm going to step further higher up and away from this whole thing is just say, why would God let this happen? Because he tells us why he allows false prophets, people who prophesy that they're speaking for God, but he allows it so that he will test you. Did you know this is in the word of God? He's testing you. He says the word testing you. I'm testing you to see if you what? Love me with your whole heart and soul. That's it. It's in Deuteronomy 13, verses 1 through 10. And you say, well, that's not a New Testament principle. Oh, I'm so sorry. You haven't read lately. Matthew 7, 21, 23 is quoting, is quoting the actual substance of that. And in this, if you knew the Septuagint Bible, even though I don't like the Septuagint, Jesus is quoting the language that was used in the Septuagint Bible for this passage. So it's not possible you can't know this. Jesus says, somebody who, who uh, you can do all kinds of miracles in my name. You, you can say you you did um, uh, cast out demons in my name, and um, you know all these great wonderful works. And you call me Lord, Lord, Lord. But I'm going to tell you, you who work anomia, which is the the person who teaches what a nomos. Nomos is the word for the Mosaic law. If you want to refer to the Mosaic law, you use the word nomos. It's in the the New Testament a hundred times. A nomos means contrary to nomos, contrary to the law of Moses. If you teach contrary to the law of Moses, I'm telling you, Jesus, I'm telling you in Matthew 7, 21, 23, that I'm going to tell you if you teach contrary to, to God's law that he gave Moses, I'm going to tell you I never knew you. Get away from me. And Jesus is quoting Deuteronomy that uses the same concept of anomia and apostasia. To say the same thing, God says there, if you teach against my law, you teach, I've given it to Moses. Now, if you teach against this law, you're going to be in a, guilty of anomia. You're going to be guilty of apostasia. This is in Deuteronomy 13, 1 to 10. And what's, what, what I'm doing is I'm testing the people to see if they know me and they love me because you'll recognize that they're a false prophet and, if, and you will not listen to him. That's the whole point of Paul. It's a test. Now, get Get the test on the piece of paper and put it down. Lord, I now realize this was a test. I reject everything about Paul. He's a false prophet. Clearly, he teaches against your law. I can see it now. Galatians clearly says the law was not given by God. It was given by angels through a mediator Moses. That's what it says in Galatians, everybody, who are no gods. And then when the Galatians want to go back and observe Sabbath, Paul says, you are what? You are seeking to go back into bondage to those who are no gods, who are weak and beggarly elements, which the angels was, were called elements in, in Greek. So I repent, Lord, from these, this sinful idea that I should listen to a false prophet like Paul. That's where, that's where you need to go and get rid of dispensationalism at the same time and not weaken our country to become as weak as happened in Nazi in Germany which was a Christian country for for decades for cent- for co- many many centuries and and a very strong Christian country but they ended up being the most anti-Christian country there ever was on the planet even more than Russia Russia just wanted to get rid of God but they didn't they didn't fight Christianity, you could still operate, you know, secretly or whatever, but they were, the, the Nazis were specifically trying to stamp it out. <laughs> and what do I mean the Nazis tried stamping it out? Well, I'm showing you here a picture of what the Nazis proposed in 1942 would be the model new look of the Christian churches. They would be completely confiscated, and actually there's a 30-point there's a, 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 a law or decree uh, that comes out of their offices and we're going to go through that right now i'm going to make you listen and see 
what's the consequence of dispensationalism? Where would your country go if you teach what Boltman teaches long enough? You will destroy Christianity, and you will end up with what's on that picture on the right. It's 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 an adoring worship of the state. Is it? And there was no more allowing of of, uh, of any emblems of Christianity or images of, of of that kind of faith. And they outlawed the church. They outlawed the Bible. And then you've got apologists for Boltman saying, well, Boltman opted to challenge the worldview of Nazism without ever naming the Fuhrer and his henchmen. I'm sorry. If this is what they're proposing in 1942, and you're you're going to survive all of World War II and get through that and watch people like Bonhoeffer die, Mr. Boltman, but you're doing nothing about this is the church they're proposing? It's no church at all. You have a comfy theologian job. You're a professor, but all the pastors, not that I you know, like the idea of a structure like we have in churches, but regardless, they all lose their jobs, but you keep yours. That's where you were. You're very, very uh, insulated from the outside real world, and you never repented. You never said, hey, my doctrine of dispensationalism is causeless because I taught a Christianity without Christ as Mr. Dietrich Bonhoeffer scolded me, and I and I knew that was about me. I knew the book Cost of Discipleship was about my doctrine, but you know what? I didn't want, and he was nice enough not to name my name, but I knew it was about me, but I never repented. I never repented, and everybody should know that. That book is about Bultmann. That's what, that's what Dietrich Bonhoeffer was doing. He was indicting Bultmann's doctrine and the effect on the churches from his time all the way back to the early uh, uh, 20s, all the way to 1937. That's what that book was uh, truly about. So, so many, many years ago, I couldn't believe a citation or a footnote in a book that referred to this as a New York Times article. So I ordered it, and I'm going to show you it's actually still online. So I spent money back in the 90s when you still didn't have the Internet to, to, to bank on. Nazi state church plan proposes to oust other faiths and ban Bible. And it's exactly what the, it does. If you're curious, just type in that uh, name, Nazi State Church Plan Proposes to Oust Other Faiths and Ban Bible, and you'll get this New York Times link, and you'll find the article, and it actually gives you an option to buy a reprint if you feel so inclined. So I just want to show you, 1902, William Reed gives Germans a chance to come back, and there's a major movement. It's called the, the Return to Jesus Movement, okay? So his book showing that Paul doesn't teach us anything substantively and we need to get back to Jesus was it was a book called Paul. That's all it said. And that was enough for the German people to be flocking in droves over to Jesus. And Bultmann was the one who used his authority to quash and destroy the movement of back to Jesus. And deliberately, he felt this was getting away from the gospel of Paul. Now listen to this, Mr. Bultmann, wherever you are, January 2, 1942, Dr. Alfred Rosenberg, long the anti-religious polemist of modern Germany and the protagonist of the New National Church, has just released the for, publica for publication a 30-point program that will form at the same time the program and tenets of the religion of National Socialism. So just so you know, I'm going to show you there's an article that explains this in Wikipedia. This is this is going on since the 1937 period when Bonhoeffer is getting uh, writing his book. You know, 700 pastors are arrested. Churches are being closed. I mean, this is this is going on well before January 1942. This is now this plan, and you can see the picture of what the church is going to look like. This is now we're going to roll out where we're taking over all the churches. So let's go into this a little bit. So do you, this is the fruit of dispensationalism. We need to we need to rub your nose in it, you people who teach dispensationalism, because this is what you're bringing to America long term. People who will go exactly the same direction. You created a vacuum. You got rid of Jesus, and this is what you get when you get rid of Jesus. It continues. The Nazi religious concept is founded not on the worship of Wotan and Valhalla, dear to the memory of General Eirik von Ludendorff, but surprisingly enough, in view of Dr. Rosenberg's past attacks on Christianity and his teachings, on a partial worship of God whose works are eternal. So I kind of find this funny. It's almost like not, uh, the New York Times is trying to find something that's compatible with Christianity in this. But what is missing? Jesus. So they'll worship God who's eternal. So they'll allow that. But Jesus is gone. Do you see this? Boltman, do you see what you did? You set up a religion that he actually accepts. Fine. You don't want Jesus? I'm good with that. You, you, you lost not only Jesus, now you lost Paul because now he's getting rid of everything. The next, the National Reich Church specifically demands the immediate turning over 
to its possession of all churches and chapels to become national churches. Okay, now, by the way, they made the, the, this was not a compulsory church for, for Germans. The German people have no call to serve the National Reich Church, but that church itself is called to serve its single doctrine, race, and people. So, just so you know, is the effect of this is it closes all the Christian churches because the only thing that can operate are the churches that are now expropriated. And unless you show up, no, nobody has to show up. The churches just remain closed if the Christians no longer want to go along with this, which <laughs> I wouldn't have gone, would you? So this is restated in another paragraph. The National Reich Church will oblige no German to adhere to it. And then it goes to another page. And here for the first time, it actually emphasizes, you didn't realize in the, in the title, Nazi church plan would ban Bible. I didn't catch that when I first saw the heading. Now they're going to go into that. Other, so then it says, other churches or religious associations above all those on based on international bodies or directed from abroad will not be tolerated in the German Reich. Okay, so no foreign churches. We, we own everything. We own all the churches and no foreign churches. Okay, so and I'm not going to read you paragraph five, but the, the New York Times article began making you think, well, this is tolerant. To, people could hold a Christian belief simultaneous with this church. No, 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 no. Five, the National Reich Church is immutably fixed in its one objective to destroy that Christian belief imported into Germany in the unfortunate year 800, whose tenets conflict with both the heart and the mentality of the German. There you go. This is what you get, Mr. Bultman, when you take Christ out of the church and we can't preach him anymore because he's a defunct dispensation. Mr. Breaker, please make a similar notation for yourself. This is the, what you're sowing the seeds for. Same to you, Mr. Jordan. Same to you, all the dispensationalists. You are sowing the seeds for this reaction. Not just reaction, you have given complete permission. You have this, said Jesus' words do not matter. And this is what you get. You get a ban on Christianity because we don't want to hear what's left. Paul, he's evil. <laughs> Even the Germans know that. Everybody knows that. If you just had Paul, he's inherently evil. He, t he justifies lying, eating idle meat. Uh, the law is is irrelevant. All things are, are are lawful. All things are unlawful unless they're inexpedient. I mean, his morality is as low as you go. You know, so any culture want, that wants to have any character backbone doesn't want Paul. So he's a discard to any culture that cares about its future. But if you wanted to have a culture you really built yourself on, it would be the commands of Jesus, which have backbone. <laughs> where you're not supposed to lie, no false testimony, and you honor God, and all these things. So even the Germans know there's nothing left. Get, let's just discard this whole thing now. So here is the only two beliefs they required in this new religion. Nine, the National Reich Church. In the National Reich Church, German men and women, boys and girls, must recognize God and his eternal work. That's it. A Christianity without Christ, just as Bonhoeffer, Bonhoeffer called it. He called it. Like a like a umpire he called a strike. It's going to be a strikeout. We have already struck out because he said if Christ came and preached, he would be rejected in a in a German church. Well, what about all the current pastors? Can they at least preach God in the eternal message as an orator? That's the new name. No no pastors are allowed by name. They're called orators now. Uh, Eleven. All are excluded from becoming orators in the national church who today or in the future attempt by any means to perpetuate the Christian faith, for they are not only liars to themselves, but also to the German people. So this is saying if you still are teaching today anything about the Christian faith or you do it in the future, you're going to be removed as a liar. Wow. Wow. And to make the victory for this viewpoint completely effective, the National Reich Church demands the immediate cessation of the printing of the Bible, as well as its dissemination throughout its, the Reich and colonies. All Sunday papers with any religious content also shall be suppressed. That's what you get with 20 years of Mr. Bultman. This is what you got. You did all this. You are the one who caused Nazism in major part. Because you open the door. You open the Pandora's box. You're not supposed to look in there. What what would the evil of darkness look like if we took Jesus' words and threw them away and said, we no longer know Christ that way? You've just seen it. And you should have been the one person after the war was over to repent and tell everybody, hey, 
you know what? I made a big blunder. Dispensationalism is wrong. I led to the Pandora's box, and this hellish doctrine came out of these people who killed the Jews, who killed the, the, the all, all minority. These people were just racist, crazy racist people, and you unleashed the whirlwind, Mr. Boltman. You are the primary guilty party. You should have been at Nuremberg. Not all the other people. Well, all the other people deserve to be there. But you should have been the number one put on the stand because you're the cause of all of this evil, Mr. Bowman. Okay, and if you're interested about this, because it, the, the, the way this is done in history, it's you have to, like, dig hard to figure out where where, where do I learn about this. So it's, a, it's under a German name in Wikipedia. It's, it doesn't say, you know, anti-Christian movement or anti-church movement. It's called Kirschenbaum. K-I-R-S-C-H-E-N-B-A-U-M. And by the way, in there, it'll, it'll tell all the truth. So it's factual. Some leading Nazis, such as Alfred Rosenberg and Martin Bormann, were vehemently anti-Christian and so to de-Christianize Germany in the long term in favor of a r racialized for form of Germanic paganism. So there you go. Okay, so uh, this will be our last slide. I just want to... Um, show you this is the contrary view basically an apologist for mr boltman uh, and i want to give some context and show you it doesn't work anyway he says nt Wright, to his credit i i like this said as much accusing boltman of lutheran quietism in the face of the third reich because he was a friend and philosophical disciple of the infamous nazi martin heidegger so boltman was a friend and disciple of an infamous nazi martin heidegger think about that this guy doesn't deny that. <laughs> what he says is, Boltman opted to challenge the worldview of Nazism without ever naming the Fuhrer and his henchmen. There's a problem with that, to say that. What is it? Boltman is a professor at a school. He's not a pastor. He's not a speaker at a weekly basis telling uh, the, the public anything. That's He just teaches the theology to students. So he kept doing his job. He didn't step out of line, and people say, well, some of the doctrines he was teaching the kids in school were, you know, things that are uh, moral or whatever. But he's and, – and, and that's his way of fighting Nazism. So he's going to teach them theological principles that they will then retain. The problem is he's teaching people who have nowhere to go. In other words, there are no more pastors. There are no more – there's no more Christian religion. So as he's, it's almost like Nero is fiddling while Rome is burning. The whole country is going to hell in a handbasket because of the teachings of Boltman, partly, okay, partly because he got rid of teaching Christ. And now kids are looking, you know, for somebody else to follow. If I don't have Jesus, I'm not going to follow Paul. Give me a break. I'll follow Jesus. But if you've taken that away, he doesn't even matter anymore. You know, they're going to go to a Wotan, Wotan or they're going to go to National Socialism or whatever it is and their gods. So Boltman was doing nobody any favors by just teaching theology to students. And that's no defense. He had to speak up more than anyone because the kids that he's working with have nowhere to go. Save their jobs. You could have seen 1942, January 2nd, in, 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 in a forward uh, a forward looking way. Just by Rosenberg's statements and Bauman's statements, these were avowed anti-Christians, and now it's coming to fruition. You should have seen that, and you should have spoken up before it even happened to create pressure to stop it, because it was going to happen eventually. So, yeah, I don't think uh, there's any uh, apology that can ever excuse Mr. Boatman, because he put it in print. He knocked down the idea that Jesus' words mattered at completely. It's, it wasn't even like, you know, you could read them for sentimental value even. It was just like they don't matter. You're wasting your time is what he's saying. I'd say you waste your time reading Paul. He was saying you read, waste your time reading Jesus. And if you listen carefully to Mr. Breaker, he's telling you you're wasting your time reading Jesus. And you listen to Mr. Jordan, he's telling you you're wasting your time reading Jesus. The same lessons that Jordan and Breaker are giving were given by Boltman, and it led partially to the rise of a group of people who said, you know what, we're going to get rid of Jesus. And we're going to make a new God, the, a, a God who fits more of our German culture or whatever it is. That's a stain that will ever be on Mr. Boltman's uh, memory. I think he's dead now. 
And so he, if that's true, if he's dead, I think he is, is he has no chance of repentance. So where is he going? Did he ever repent? I don't know. So I can't give a final judgment, but I just, I wouldn't want to be him if he hasn't repented. That's for sure. He's the one who set this all in motion. He's the one who contributed to Nazism more than any single person because Nazism was an idea. Think about what it was really about. It was an idea that caught on, caught fire. Why was there even kindling wood that could catch fire? Because you had killed all the, the life of Christianity out of Christians and gave them nothing in return. And kids want to find God. They want to have something higher and more important than themselves. And, and that's what the, 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 that's what the German state offered them, some higher purpose. They get, made them feel valuable and important, and it reinvigorated the whole country. And that's what happens when you, st you stab Christ again, you crucify him again, and you throw him into the wolves, and gone he goes, and he's no longer important, Mr. Bowman. That's what you did. Very evil doctrine. And now we have – you cursed us with your message of dispensationalism, and now we are afflicted by it, and we we got to get rid of this thing. And, and you've made it very difficult because you're so at such an authority, and the only voices that speak out about you are you know, little people on their de desktop and on the internet. That's it. Uh, the theologians are all stacked up on your side. So we can only pray to God that it will stop, that you will be defeated. And we will get rid of dispensationalism, and we will at least be preaching Jesus again one of these days. I pray to God. All right. That's the end of this uh, episode.